Doug Ross. Welcome back to Whole Earth Tools. I have a new guest uh, called Steve Linton, and he is the president of Dell Tech Homes out of Asheville, North Carolina. I spoke with him about a year and a half ago, um, during, before the pandemic, actually. Uh, so I didn't have Zoom at the time, so I just had her audio recording. But he had lots of great videos that illustrate all these wonderful houses. And once you see it, you'll understand. It's just really good stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. So you, you got a couple of minutes we can talk um, briefly? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, happy to do it. Oh, great. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at your website again, all the beautiful uh, countryside. Is, is that North Carolina? Is that I'm on the your landing page? Um, some of that is North Carolina. Some of that's Virginia and uh, Tennessee. But yeah, sort of the, the, uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains, Appalachian. Could, let's get started with um, with what's going on the uh, the the brief history of, of Dell Tech Homes. Um, um, sure. How did it all start? Yes, yeah, so Dell Tech started in 1968. There were two brothers that began the company. One, sort of the prototypical entrepreneur, and the other, the engineer. And you know, they had seen other round home designs and kind of been interested in uh, how they might make it better. And, you know, one little tangent that I find interesting um, is the uh, Robert, who was the engineer, had actually had a career at Oak Ridge National Labs, not hmm. in any sort of uh, weapons or nuclear capacity, but basically helping physicists do their research. And I just think it's a fascinating wow. sort of little mini side story here. Like, they, the physicists would bring him experiments that they wanted to run, and he would have to figure out how to actually make them work in reality. <laughs> and so I sort of see his um, insights and innovation in the in the Dell Tech product because there was this idea that a panoramic home would be you know, a really amazing place to live, but none of them none of the designs really worked particularly well. So they came up with this um, self supporting roof system that's really kind of the the unique feature of the Dell Tech where there's no there's no load bearing walls or anything on the inside of the home if you don't want it. And so um, that original innovation that happened in the late 60s kind of kicked the company off and we started building lots of homes for different resorts and um, people would come stay in these homes and for a vacation and, and you know that kind of thing and they'd say, wow, this is this is a really cool house. I want I want to live in one of these. And so that's kind of what really started the, the momentum of where we are today, which is, you know, we we build um, the vast majority of our homes for, you know, individual homeowners one at a time. So when did you discover that these things became hurricane resistant and, and, and started designing for that? I mean, that was like, you're, you're talking about beautiful views, but suddenly you realize. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so 
um, the, you know, we had, I don't know how many homes we had built um, by the sort of point at the late 80s when hurricanes kind of back came back into the, mm. the conversation. But, you know, Hugo and Andrew were the sort of two big hurricanes that came through in the late 80s and early 90s. And what, um, you know, what, what happened was that the Deltex in these hurricane areas uh, did really well. They survived all those storms, uh, every, every home we had built. And so at that point, the, the shape was the primary reason that that was happening. Um, just from a sort of fluid mechanics standpoint, you get about 30% less pressure building up on a, a round shape than on a rectangular one. And so, you know, the benefit of that became clear from, from those storms. But then the company began to, you know, intentionally kind of say, all right, well, you know, what else can we do? And so the innovation sort of kicked off at that point to include stronger materials, um, enhanced connections, a power everything was, was put together. And so, you know, when you look at the, the modern day Deltec, um, you know, obviously still have the, the, the great benefit of the shape, but, you know, the materials that we're using and the, and the connections that we've designed to kind of hold everything together have, have really taken it to a whole new level. And we really kind of continue that innovation every day. Um, the uh, I, I'm looking on the, on the website about these uh, the footprint home designs and options and custom designs, but I guess what I'm asking is, do you guys have like <clears throat> when when a customer comes to you and says I I love this idea of a roundhouse, you've already got designs that are sort of like proven and and you can choose these or you can create your own. So let, give you know. Give me the uh, the Chinese menu, I guess, is, is how you guys would approach or when a customer approaches you. Yeah, so when when we start working with a customer, um, you know, you're, you're right. They sort of have the ability to use a plan that's already been done. Um, if, if there's something they like and we've built, you know, over 5,000 homes. So there's, there's lots of options that we can show people to start with. Most of the time people will... Um, you know, take a, a basic idea that they see that they like and then sort of make it their own. And so the way that works is through what we call our building blocks. And so with the with the round shape, there are 10 different sizes of that round structure, as small as 300 square feet, and then they sort of tier all the way up to 2,500 square feet, and that's on a single story. Um, and then you can do, you know, up to three stories. So someone might take a building block, so they take a, a 1,000 square foot round structure, and then maybe they uh, you know, connect it to a, um, you know, so maybe another 1,000 square foot structure, and that would come, you know, be one particular design, or they may take a, you know, 1,500 square foot round and then put a wing off it for their garage. And so there's, there's really millions of different ways to combine those 10 basic round building blocks with either other round shapes or, you know, connectors and wings that, that sort of give people this uh, this design flexibility, which I think is in large part, uh, you know, something that customers really enjoy is being able to make it their own. Mm -hmm. Well, now, the are these things prefabricated at a factory? Uh, yes. Yeah, so here in Asheville, we have what we call our connection center, which is our, our production facility, our factory. And... <coughs> You know, we sort of describe our homes as almost a hybrid between the, the typical way of stick building a home and, say, a full modular home that arrives on a truck that's completely finished. And so, you know, the hybrid for us is we're building the, the shell or the structure in our factory and doing that to an extremely high level of precision and excellence so that you know, we can ultimately deliver on creating a legacy home for somebody, that home that's going to survive the hurricane, but also be passed down from you know, generation to generation uh, and stand the test of time. And so you know, we sort of do all the work around the shell and the structure here that contributes to that you know, longstanding legacy home. And then the, the finished work, you know, whether it's the sheetrock or the carpet or the cabinetry, all that stuff gets done 
on site by uh, a local builder partner. Now you said legacy home. Are you talking about, say, I, I have a three thousand square foot home and I want to add this round portion to the home? Is that what you're saying? Your people are you're modifying an existing structure, or is this starting from scratch? No, yeah, we we don't modify um, or add on to existing structures. You know, we've had people add, mm -hmm. um, you know, like a guest house, for instance, but but they're not typically attached so okay. uh, by and large we're building these from the ground up and really the, the concept of a legacy home is more speaking to the idea that you know the, the typical american home is not built to stand the test of time and, and our philosophy is they'll take is much different right we want this to this home to be passed down from generation to generation to you know stand strong to hurricanes for example if it's built in the coastal area but really against whatever environmental conditions it's placed up against to sort of change the paradigm of you know how homes are built right okay that's great that's a great philosophy and, and i think other builders should should take uh take that example um the um suppose i don't live by the coast um and i don't need all this extra strength for hurricanes and i live way up in the mountains i just want a view is there is there a concept yep. for that too yeah, so that's a um, it's a pretty common um, you know customer interest for us. Somebody's got this amazing piece of property and they really want to capture the view, and so that's another application of the of the round design. And it really goes to what, what we call this idea of real connection. And so let me explain kind of what that means to us. But people. Uh, usually originally think of it in terms of the view, right? So mm. they're they're building a home that connects them to the natural world outside. In many ways, when you're when you're living in a Delta, it almost feels like you're living outside because of the way the windows wrap around you. Mm -hmm. um, so you get this really unique sense of connection to nature. But the, the the circular home also connects people sort of inside the home because there's not you know, kind of walls, they tend to be very open, and so there's this idea of connecting with your family in a different way. Um, and then we even extend that to the idea of connecting with sort of the greater um, world in terms of, you know, we're building a sustainable home, uh, as I mentioned, a legacy home, something that's going to, you know, last but also take care of, of Mother Earth as well. Wow. See, now, are, you're from the North Carolina area, correct? Well, I've been here 15 years. I grew up in Ohio. Huh. Um, but, uh, yeah, the company has certainly been here okay. ever since it began. Yes, I'm from the West. I'm San Francisco, back in the hippie days. And the things that you just talked about are what we hippies used to talk about 40 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you're a hippie, but you sound like one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I, I've, uh, I've certainly... Uh, <laughs> certainly live many of those philosophies, I think, personally, but you know, I think it's interesting because we, one of the pieces of evolution of Delta, and you sort of asked about how, you know, how we sort of evolved into this idea of building hurricane-resistant homes, so I think the other evolution was in, in understanding how a home that was really designed by an engineer to be this extremely strong and sustainable structure also produces these intangible benefits mm. and that's this idea of real connection and we've always had a hard time capturing that in words because at the end of the day it's an experience people have to get inside of a delta come to understand that idea of real connection um, but when you talk to the people who live in delta and have lived in them for a long time that's what they always talk about mm. like this home just feels different than any other home that i've ever lived in and i think that's one of the things that's so unique about the home, but it's also the hardest thing to to capture. It's very ephemeral to mm -hmm. you know to talk about. When I see your houses, they're all windows. So, what are the smart design, green building concepts that that go into the house besides you know just the the view? I mean, there's got to be right. in, insulation and the materials and things. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. So. You know, I sort of look at it in, in sort of two facets. There's 
you know, the sustainability of the product, the actual home itself, and then um, sort of how we approach the business in a sustainable way. So I'll kind of touch on both of those. But the, in terms of the home itself, we, for us, it starts with the idea of energy efficiency, which is really to say building that envelope, that shell of the home the right way mm -hmm. the first time. It's, it's really hard to go back and add <coughs> insulation or make it more airtight once you've once you've built that structure. So we we start with some of those hidden things that have profound impact on energy efficiency and that, you know, is using, you know, materials such as, you know, we gasket um, you know, our homes, the, the the materials in our homes get gasketed together to create an airtight home because that makes a, a big impact on the amount of energy use as, as an example. Um, we also look to apply passive solar design where possible, which um, the, the, the basics of that, if you're not familiar, is essentially, you know, orienting the home mm -hmm. south. Now, in a, in a round home, um, it works a little bit differently, but it's the same kind of concept. If you have most of your windows facing south, you can get that free energy from the sun in the wintertime and essentially um, take advantage of those windows, because you're right in the sense that windows are not as good as the insulation and the walls around them just by by nature but you know you might be um, offsetting that with say a triple pane window today or you know using passive solar design to capture energy from the sun and then uh, essentially in the summertime you just design the overhang on the house to block the sun from from coming into the same windows so you're not overheating um, but so it's, it's really thinking about the orientation of the home, the efficiency of the home, the envelope, and how it's built. That's kind of the very first things that we uh, that we focus on. The I see some of the the photographs of the of the houses. The conventional houses have solar panels on them. Can can I put solar panels on the round ones too? Yes, you definitely can. Um, they can either go on the roof, or people will put them on a ground mount system, depending on. Um, you know their uh, their particular site conditions, but um, yeah, yeah, they're done. Okay, okay, done all the time on the round ones. The now the the, the uh, people living by the ocean uh, that are a lot of these, like you said, a lot of your first houses were built by you know vacation homes along the the beaches and things. With the rising waters and things, can you mount? Can you stilt and elevate these homes um, to you know as the water rises and people still want to live by the ocean? <clears throat> during a, a you know a possible um, or not a, a probable uh, hurricane that's coming and high waters and storm surge, these you can protect the houses by the by the elevation. Is that something you guys have done or can do or will do? Yes, in fact, the um, I would say the vast majority of our homes in coastal areas are built up on pilings. Oh, okay. um, you know, that's really kind of a, a site specific. <laughs> question yeah. but it's, a, yeah. it's certainly a, uh, a strategy that makes a lot of sense given you know the effects we're seeing of climate change and you know I, I think in general um, what what we're seeing now with you know extreme weather sort of increasing is um, you know I, I tend to take a, a generally optimistic view in that I think humans are very adaptable and I think that we will use that to you know, innovate in new ways. And I think, you know, in many ways, Dell Tech's already done some of that innovation. It's just a matter of um, getting more people aware of it. But I also like the challenge that it gives to us to continue to innovate. You know, after uh, after Hurricane Dorian came through, we saw you know all of our homes perform really, you know really well and. The question we asked was, all right, well, what about for the 200 mile an hour storm or the 250 mile an hour storm? Are we ready for that? And what what's the next innovation so that we're building wow. homes that you know can be strong enough in those areas? And then I think the other piece of the equation is if you're going to build in the coastal area, you have to think about sort of the um, you know this idea of how, how are we going to thrive in the aftermath. Um, you know, I think one of the really unique things about a Delta home is it's combining this 
really high level of strength and resilience with this really high level of sustainability. And so the home survives the storm, but it also can thrive in the aftermath, meaning people can still live there. Um, it, can, it can still function and it can be, you know, back in action, um, you know, very quickly. So, you know, there was a, um, there was a home down in, on one of the barrier islands that was kind of the first hit with Dorian and, um, you know, the vast majority of homes on this island were destroyed, but there was a delta <coughs> there and it, it ended up becoming the, the, um, you know, the medical clinic. A couple of doctors used it to, to help, you know, treat people that needed it because it was, it was, uh, you know, ready to, to, to serve that purpose. So I think that's the other part of the story is, um, you know, designing homes that can, that can be resilient, but also adaptable in the aftermath of, of possible events so we can be more resilient as a society. Well, I, I think that, that proves uh, an example to the building industry uh, that your designs are, are, work, are, are superior. And also, you know, I didn't want to go into this, but I'm going to. The in insurance industry <clears throat> has been um, making the same mistakes over and over and over and over uh, by building the same exact kind of houses in the same exact floodplains over, you know, after storm after storm. Is, is this, is there a profit reason for this to raise all of our our premiums, or is this just stupid? I mean, what? <laughs> I, I, you know, it's like you can't make the same mistake over and over and over. What is going on? Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Have a thank great uh, holiday, and uh, I'll I'll be uh, um, keeping you guys updated on the the website and the book and things. All righty. Super. I appreciate it. Take care now. Bye bye. All right. Take care. Bye. Thank you.